Imagine a world, precision nutrition as IVs, precision nutrition as supplements. Everything's precision based on your genes and your blood in real time, and you can get in the front of that. This is something nobody has attempted to do before. So I think this whole thesis of human optimization and what 10x Health is focused on. You've been in the space of biohacking and analyzing almost everything that's come to the marketplace now in the last, I don't know, how many years you've been doing this? Honestly, when I was, so I was homeschooled K through 12. I grew up in North Idaho and was just a total nerd. I was president of the chess club, played violin for 13 years. I spent a lot of time in my bedroom, you know, reading fantasy fiction, churned out my first novel when I was 13 mm -hmm. years old. Like I was just full on autodidactic, intellectual, introverted Ben. And I discovered the sport of tennis when I was 14 and just fell in love with tennis. Uh, played tennis for hours every day, started running up and down the hills behind my house, started paying attention to what I was eating and pre and post workout nutrition. Met a couple of guys in the community. Uh, uh, the guy was the Washington State powerlifting champ. Another guy who was a professional bodybuilder. And these guys who were family friends just started teaching me about physical culture and science. And I got so interested in a topic that I'd never been interested in before in my life, N namely science and specifically human performance as it relates to science, that that's what I decided to go study in college. I, I was before that thinking about doing video game programming and just forsook that, walked onto the tennis team at Lewis Clark State College, started playing tennis, started studying at the time, what was called kinesiology, transferred up to University of Idaho after a year and just went deep into exercise science. I actually took the MCAT, um, did all my pre-med coursework. I got accepted to six medical schools out of college. Wow. And there were two that I really wanted to get into. They were MD, PhD programs, one at Duke and one at UPenn. I didn't get into either of those programs, so I thought, okay, I need to make myself look even better on paper and then come back and reapply. So I got a job in hip and knee surgical sales for this company called Biomet out of Post Falls, Idaho. So I worked with them for about nine months and absolutely detested all the time I was spending in hospitals and clinics, standing there with a laser pointer, helping surgeons install hip and knee implants and people who would have been probably better served through preventive, yeah, preventive approaches, or you know, regenerative. fitness, nutrition, you know, autoimmune yeah. approach to arthritis, et cetera. And I quit that job. After nine months, I walked across the street from my apartment, which was in Liberty Lake, Washington, slapped my resume on the counter and asked for a job managing the gym. And Spent two years there building up their fitness programs. I met a doctor there who uh, was the, the doctor for rock and roll marathon and Ironman triathlon at the time. His name was PZ Pierce. And PZ proposed this idea to me of a one-stop shop for sports medicine where you could have chiropractors and, and physicians and massage therapists and physical therapists and me as the director of sports performance all under one roof, which That's to me cool. was just yep. super cool. And we did that. So we opened Champion Sports Medicine in Spokane, Washington. I ran that for four years, and we were just known for doing the most cutting-edge stuff. We had indirect calorimetry, meaning we could measure fat and carb oxidation at rest, VO2 max exercise. We were doing all this blood work early on before a lot of trainers and coaches were mm -hmm. doing things like self-quantification and blood work. We had one of the first uh, platelet-rich plasma machines for injections. We had high-speed video cameras for doing analysis of gait and bike fits. I had underwater cameras I'd take triathletes and swimmers to the pool with to do underwater biomechanical analysis. So we were kind of known as the place to go if you wanted the best of the best training and uh, you know, treatment for any medical And you would issues, attract people from all over the world that would come yeah. to train. Yeah, so it, yeah. it culminated in 2008. I got voted as America's top personal trainer. And that's what kind of thrust me into the limelight of a lot of what I do now. Content, you know, online coaching, advising, you know, writing, things like that. So I eventually just basically sold out of the gym and the studio, moved into my house and started doing a lot more of what I do now, which is, you know, research, consulting, advising, podcasting, etc. But starting from 14 and tennis to today, I'm 42 now, it has been essentially, you know, 28 years of just deep study in nutrition and exercise science. So this is all I've lived for basically and, my and, entire career. And all over the world. Yeah. I mean, you're a world authority yeah. on this subject. 
Yeah, yeah. Because I've, I've been watching your stuff. I, I knew before we ever met, because you and I met uh, maybe four years ago at a health conference. And I was like, there's the Ben Greenfield, because I didn't know I was going to run into you there. And so with all that experience you have and all the things you've seen and people sending you stuff to test and people sending you things to look at and people sending you yeah. things that they pay you well, to it, promote. It, it drives my wife nuts. Like every day, six to eight boxes show up at the house and you got to try this. And this is the new neurofeedback headset. And these are the three different new forms of red light therapy. And these three new supplements to help you live to 200 years old. And it's just boxes all over the place every single day. So it drives my wife nuts, but I, I love it. Like yeah, basically I'm just constantly getting to try all this new stuff. So it's exhausting with the box cutter, but it's pretty fun. Yeah. So now all of a sudden I tell you, Hey, you should check out our new platform. So you're like, okay, I'll, I'll go check it out. You check it out. You get delivered the system. It covers all the things that you've spent your whole life working on, right? Optimizing a human being, bringing instead of reactive healthcare, which is what our system is today. I mean, we spend 14,500 per capita for, and, and, and literally, Literally, we're ranked 167th or something next to Vietnam, yeah. who spends $150 a year. And a majority, anybody that's had to access the healthcare system, a majority of people know how poorly managed it is and how expensive it is and how controlled it is. If you don't mm-hmm. have the right insurances, they'll they'll put you into bankruptcy. It's, right. it's, Which is a recipe for disaster when paired with 24-7 access to hyperpalatable food that is heavily marketed. Yeah, so we're not even into the food sourcing yeah. yet. So we're just into the medical system, third leading cause of death, checking into a hospital. I think it's like crazy, right? And so most of the people I know, they would opt not to go anywhere near the hospital system. So what we're talking about is pulling forward to the very front end of because in my mind, I've been in healthcare for 28 years, right? So you have the reactive, which is what we are almost entirely today. You have the intervention. So where someone's starting to have serious problems. And then on the very front end of that, you have a wellness and longevity. And for me, if you can get into the wellness and longevity side, then you minimize in the future the reactive side. And I've seen this just in the four years of having three and a half years of having 10X Health, that if people focus on the optimization, but as a customer first, and then as the owner with Grant Cardone, it was convoluted. It was a one-off. It was whoever you happen to talk to that happened to be an expert on something particular. And so I wanted to reinvent and reimagine the deliverable. And I've spent the last three and a half years investing in this and looking at everything around the world. And I came across on a global basis, this precision platform. Now we have done very well with our five uh, breaks and supplementing those. We've seen right. so the, much success. The methylation genetic test, which, so which much. is good, yep. but limited in terms of the amount of data that'll tell you. And and that and it's we're looking at five SNPs. Mm-hmm. Here we're looking at fifty six. Yeah. And so we're looking at a much broader ten x per se, a much broader approach of how all this stuff interacts. And so when our global medical team delivered to you your full report, which happened, what was the first thing you were thinking when you started going through the significance and the connectivity of the overall data? Well, we talked about the customization piece, which I I think that alone is impressive. But I think that a lot of people don't understand these Star Wars robot esque terms and acronyms for different genetic SNPs yep. and the FABPD2, ARXYZ, R2D2, whatever. When you go through the report, and I can show you, obviously you've looked through yours, there's a QR code in the front that you can scan, but each section that you get to, and this was super helpful for me because I tend to do like 60, 70% of my learning when I'm walking or working out or out hiking or you know, tooling around the garage or whatever. But there's a QR code that you can scan at the beginning of each section where Dr. Daniel kind of walks you through with pretty good diagrams, mm-hmm. cartoons, illustrations, you know, not long, but you know, four to eight minutes or so, I think is the average length of these videos what this all actually means, like what it actually looks like inside your body. So for me as an information junkie, that was pretty cool that you have the education piece baked in, but then there's also this list of foods, like like the foods that would be ideal for weight loss and the foods that would be ideal for nutrient density and overall health. So, yeah. so the thing here is 
imagine a world when we talk about extensions, eating at restaurants, ordering food and have it delivered to your home, precision nutrition as IVs, precision nutrition as supplements. Everything's precision based on your genes and your blood in real time, and you can get in the front of that. When you saw this and we started talking about it, what was the thing that was going on in your mind about the opportunity here? Oh, it's huge. I mean, the, this is something nobody has attempted to do before, I think probably because it's a pretty big project. And, you know, I met, like you were saying, three and a half, four years ago, but I'm just now learning a little bit more about the way that you operate and how you know how to seize these kind of opportunities and build them into something that's actually accessible to mass market. And, you know, this is the type of thing that would normally be pretty fringe, pretty unaccessible. I've seen people attempt to do things like this before, but seeing what you've rolled out, trying the products and thumbing through the books, talking with the doctor, looking over my own results and starting to adopt this stuff for myself, it is unique. Like, like, especially in terms of it being available to the masses now.